What's happening guys? Another Sunday scan coming at you. October is in the books. It's for November 2nd and I'm excited for this market coming up. Uh, I think that uh, this week is going to be crazy. Uh, obviously elections, who knows if we even find out who we're going to have for president this week. I mean, I, I just can only imagine the amount of issues that we're going to have. Uh, I'm not being political here. I just think that there's going to be uh, a lot of issues with this whole uh, voting type of uh, situation that we have this year and I think it's going to take a little bit of extra time. So with that said, how does that turn into a trade? How do, uh, how do we as traders uh, take advantage of that? And you know, we just have to take it one day at a time, right? So October 26th, I had tweeted out, you know, just for those of you guys that need that reminder, COVID numbers are going up, the election's coming up, we've been straight up. Uh, you know, there is every reason to not necessarily pull back, but get super, super volatile. And, and we did, and we, we are. Um, and whether or not we continue to fall this week, or if we find some type of support, uh, that remains to be seen. So I think that there's a couple things to think about right now. One being uh, that everything has just gone up huge. Don't underestimate how much stuff can pull back. Look at DraftKings, right? And I, and I was looking at it for the longest time. I'm like, man, all these people that came from sports betting, you know, all they did is just put their money into DraftKings and they've literally like tripled or quadrupled their money, right? So easy, all you had to do was hold, but you know what's even easier? Lose 50% over the last 30 days. Stock is down huge off 60s, 65, 60s, whatever it was. They raised, they got a great price at that raise, which just like SRRK this week, it doesn't matter what price they raise at. Same thing with PEN, P-E-N-N. -N. It doesn't matter what price they raise at. If the market's coming in, the market's coming in. And uh, you know, just be aware that these things went way further than anybody could imagine. Uh, and at the same time, they could also come back way further than you imagine. So I'm not here trying to say, you know, hell is coming and the market's gonna tank and all that kind of stuff. I don't play that game. All I want as a trader is volatility. All I want as a trader is big parabolic moves that I can fade the backside and potentially play the bounces. Uh, and most importantly, volume. I want liquid stocks. I want stocks with a ton of volume. Outlier volume, outlier moves, and that's where I excel, that's what I want, and that's what I focus on. So, um, you know, with that said, some video topics for tonight. Uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you guys for the likes. If you guys do it again, I will continue to put out more content. I have another video coming. Uh, I put out my uh, conference video on YouTube uh, and uh, I do have another looking left video coming up. It just family over that video uh, took uh, took the front seat this uh, this week. So it is uh, coming. I think I should probably have it recorded tonight uh, when I get home and then I'll probably aim to get it out by uh, potentially Monday, but I would say probably Tuesday because I would like to make it a, a little bit better, a little bit more interactive. Uh, if I rush them out, then they won't be as good. But if I if I put some uh, some time into it and then have Cam uh, put nice graphics uh, or not graphics but lines to uh, kind of go over what I'm talking about, I think that the points are going to hit home a, a lot better. But uh, for those of you guys that watched it uh, or watched it live on Traders for a Cause, uh, you know if you put any of that in, that information to work the following days, I mean it was it was perfect. Um, it worked out really, really well. We had a couple big names uh, and big trades that literally happened uh, right after SCKT uh, as well as EQ on Friday. Um, and so anyway, most popular question I've gotten is uh, when are the Traders for a Cause videos coming? So we are almost uh, completed with the back end. Uh, so we are, we're making like a whole, um, you know, a, a nice back end, uh, basically a, a nice, um, I'm not sure the name of it, like a, a console, you know, so, something uh, something for you guys to be able to log in, check out the videos. Uh, you can see the COVID event that we did. You can see the 2019 Traders for a Cause Vegas videos, and then we'll have something for 
you know, continuing on. So if we do a spring event and then if we do Vegas in 2021, uh, we'll always have those videos and our goal is to basically create um, this one-stop shop for all those videos and also you know, be able to get people to pledge for charity at the same time. Um, so once again, give this video a like if you guys find value in Sunday Scans. It helps us. Um, I do these each and every single week. It helps me. Uh, the more that I talk about what I want to do, the more that you know, my words come into actions. You know, I talked about uh, you know, focusing on sizing into two names. Don't worry about getting you know, sized up on every single trade. Don't worry about uh, pushing the envelope on, on you know, every single trade, but zone in, focus on those A pluses. What's A plus for me may not be A plus for you. And you know, there's a lot of people that uh, PM'd me at the end of the month and they had their best months ever. And you know, they said, how can I improve? How can I size up? How can I do this? How can I do that? And I said, you know, a couple of simple things. One is, where'd you make all your money? Where'd you lose all your money, right? So when you where you made all your money, review those, review the wins, make sure they weren't reckless, right? Because we never want to, you know, repeat something that was risky and we just happen to benefit from it. Um, but look at that. Focus on what you made the most money on. Those are your setups that obviously that you understand the best. Look at any. Uh, continual patterns in your losses, things that uh, you might see yourself repeating uh, and then continually losing. And just take them out, you know, just get rid of them. And so I avoid a lot of trades now just because I know that at some point, if I continually trade this type of setup, I will end up losing it all. You know, I could trade eight in a row and then the ninth one will take it all back. So. For me, I'd rather, if I'm gonna trade them, I trade a little bit smaller now, bigger picture, uh, and you know that's, that's what's important for me as a trader. Um, and you know, a good example of that is you know, SPI, right? Uh, SPI, everybody wants the next one, and then you've got MRIN, you've got KXIN, you've got all these different you know, stocks that are running, and you get in this like, thought process, all right, this is the next one. And so you're right, you know, because everybody's, everybody's gonna hold it. So you're gonna be right, but all of a sudden it starts to turn the corner and then it pulls back and then it pulls back again and then it, you know, slams another 50%. All of a sudden you just turn this trade that was actually pretty good into a massive loss because you're trying to catch the, you know, the next big momentum trade. So remember, these things come by surprise. Uh, they're not easily anticipated and they're when you're least expecting it because those move, the, the big moves are not a result of everybody just getting excited and buying it. It's shorts caught on the wrong side of the move. So if shorts were just caught, they're not going to be, you know, aggressively shorting the, the next stock. They're going to be probably hands off for a little bit uh, because they don't want to get ran over again. So just keep that in mind. Um, last couple things before we get into the scan this week. Uh, I talk a lot. Oh, t-shirts. Um, Loyal Brands. Uh, John, he's in my room uh, and uh, he's been kind enough to send out all these Sunday scans for me. So uh, we were we had a, a, a shop on the website, but we're going to change the link. We're just going to shoot it over to, to him. So that will be our uh, official store. A lot of people have been asking me about uh, the shirts that obviously I've been wearing in the videos. Um, and uh, so we're going to be, uh, we, we always have had them. Uh, but uh, I just said to John, I was like, if you can fulfill them, then you know I'd rather go to you, um, you know, within the community and whatnot, and uh, do that rather than just going to some you know third party uh, that is going to fulfill orders and you know who knows um, who knows who uh, is behind it. So um, I thought that was pretty neat. So we'll be adjusting those links. We'll have a, a link in the description to check it out. Uh, and then the proceeds over, you know, whatever the, his cost is and things like that, uh, we'll end up uh, putting it to Traders for a Cause, just like we did in the store um, on on the website. You know, I'm not I'm not in the apparel game. I'm not looking to to get rich off of apparel. Um, so uh, other than that, Avidity Fitness. I talk about this a lot. Um, last time I did this, most I would say 90% of the people are still doing it. Uh, but it was a challenge that um, if you did, if you came to four out of the next six or so, four out of the next seven, uh, 
um, workouts that I would donate up to 250 uh, per person to Traders for a Cause. So we did that and we raised, you know, I don't remember, I think it was about five grand or so. But um, I'm gonna be doing that again because this year I can't run my, well, I technically could, but I, I just don't. I think it's a good year to take off due to COVID. But typically I run uh, an event in, in my hometown or right around it um, and the next uh, city over. Or town over and um, we do a big big event at a restaurant we have the top floor and we usually have just shy about 200 guests and we usually raise a lot of money for building dreams for Marines um, and so this year we're, we're gonna take off uh, for obvious reasons but that doesn't mean that we can't uh, donate so just like when we run the Traders for a Cause events the goal is you know, that I don't just write a check. You know, I could do that any day, be quiet about it, and then that's all that gets donated. But if you can inspire other people to give, then your check becomes worth more. Or if you can inspire other people to do things, then potentially, uh, in this case, your health, uh, potentially dribble down to your trading, uh, will get better. And then you'll have more to potentially give. So, um, that's always my goal with these things. So if you guys are potentially interested, I'll probably do a video uh, on it. It'll be a, a full-on challenge uh, into Thanksgiving. It'll be free up to that point. If you do X amount of uh, classes, then uh, I'll probably donate you know, 250 or 500 per person. So I'll work out all of those uh, things and then we'll, uh, we'll get it rolling and we'll raise some money for the Marines. Um, Past couple of weeks, firing on all cylinders, uh, and, and it's been great. And the best part about it that I notice is I come to the desk in the morning, I absorb the information, I look at, you know, okay, this one's running, you know, what should I know about it? Uh, I look at certain price levels, I set some price alerts, I look at other things that I've been missing, uh, and I'm just, I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush to, to put on a trade. I, you know, I, I want to save my energy for the best of the best of the best. And so you saw that with the pins trade. Uh, that was a monster. You saw it with uh, Twitter and Neo and all these uh, other trades where I just want to wait. I want to wait. If there's, a, if there's a big opportunity, big volume, big range, then yeah, I probably would take it. But as far as the, the miniature trades and stuff, I'm all set right now. You know, I'm, I'm focused, I'm zoned, I'm patient, and I am waiting for those two big trades per day uh, that, uh, you know, let's, let's just keep it going. That's, that's my outlook right now. Uh, and as you guys know, yes, I will trade a lot more names, but the ones that I scale in are going to be the winners. The ones that I just kind of kick off are going to be those starter entries that didn't do anything. But then I've got my main two watches, and that is what is important. Um, for me, uh, as far as scaling using size, it's surrounding an event. Was it big news? Was it earnings? Was it something that just came out in the market uh, that it's reacting to? And the volume is high. And to me, it doesn't take out market risk. So don't take that as there's less risk, you know, 100% less risk or anything like that. There's always market risk. But to me, the days that I want to scale size is surrounding that event that already happened, right? I don't want to do it before the event because obviously what if something happens earlier? What if uh, something un unknown comes out before, right? Um, and so in this case, pins has the earnings, Twitter has the earnings, uh, all these types of, of names. I'm going to surround that move for the next two, three, four days potentially. And then I'm, I'm going to you know, lay off the size. Typically the, the next two or three days, I'll be using size on those trades and then lay off. And at which point I would be looking to join the trend with less size uh, because then the market risk and other news potential, uh, you know, obviously goes up in my opinion. So um, after the event, I start thinking bigger picture, less size. So I'm looking for the bigger move, but a little bit less size so that I can let the trade work. Whereas during the event, it happens, it reacts to it. We've got all this volume. We've got all this range. I am sizing in. I am using that uh, to my advantage during those you know, two or three days, outlier days with volume because the news just hit. So the likelihood of something else coming right away 
It's always there. There's always that market risk. But to me, it's worth the risk to use those couple days to my advantage and then lay off. And that's exactly what I've been doing. You saw it with Snap, you saw it with Twitter, Neo, uh, JMIA, all those names. So, uh, last but not least, always look left. You saw some great examples of it. I've been posting them on Twitter. Uh, so, uh, I, and I've been getting a lot of feedback. So, I, I love that you guys are uh, taking a lot from this. Uh, it, it's, it's, this is why I do these videos. So, I'm, I'm happy to hear that kind of stuff. And then last but not least, it's always know what you own. Know what you're trading. EQ. EQ, that stock, on Friday, why did it fade? The writing was on the wall. If you care, you can go back and review it. You can go back and look at the similarities between that and other names that have also faded, but it's not that hard. If you just take five minutes and look at the filings, you will understand why I said know what you own in the room on Friday morning and don't overstay on the trade because of these reasons. And that is for you guys to check out. Most of you guys will not. Most of you guys just want to be told how, but that's not how you learn and that's not how you get your edge. So if you want your edge, go out and get it. Now, let's get going. All right. Uh, so second part of the scan is the setups for tomorrow. What am I interested in? By the way, if you went over last Sunday's scan, somebody had tweeted me like, hey, are you going to do a review of how your ideas worked out? You guys can easily look at that and see how they worked out. But last last Sunday scan was you know off the charts for uh, the two short ideas and the, and the one long idea on DSS that uh, broke out basically from five to uh, 750 or so uh, before obviously pulling back. But um, great opportunities each and every single day last week. Uh, again, my goal is just to condense the watch list to the best two names. Now, first and foremost, Josh Ward. I mean, I think it's Josh, J-O-A-S-H. Uh, it's a different way of spelling and I've never actually seen it spelled that way. Uh, but, uh, Email me, webmaster at investorsunderground.com. You can either have a Momo Traders book or a uh, month in the IU chat room. Your pick and then whatever one you don't pick we'll do on the next Sunday scan. Uh, and then we'll get right back to the t-shirts. And by the way, I was wearing this Loyal shirt. I forget to say it. So that's John from Loyal Brands that is going to be sending them, uh, sending them out. So once again, just to remind you, we'll have a description to uh, that in the... Uh, in the, in the description of, of this YouTube video. So you can click through, check out his website. He's got uh, the shirts that I wear on scan. Um, and uh, you know, if you, if you want one, get one. But uh, anyway, let's get right into it. So Twitter, Twitter uh, just absolutely demolished, uh, you know, longs, but at the same time, longs have been having a field day for, for months. They're, they're sitting pretty still, uh, but obviously a, a move from 52 to uh, 41 that's a, that's a big move. It's down 11 bucks, 11.50 on Friday. So great opportunities. Uh, I got short off the open. Uh, and I mean, again, just like we talk about, looking left, always look left. Uh, it's, it's not rocket science. Uh, I like to be uh, kind of a, a scalpish type mode pre-market just because I don't want to build into a position and then just screw myself up for the day because I'm you know, too focused on trying to make another trade work. So in a situation like this, perfect situation is for it to rip out of the open. Look left, look to the pre-market highs. I mean, it, it's picture perfect. It's, this is not hindsight. You saw my trade on it. I reacted to that move. I started in short and I let the trade work. So that was a great trade in the chat room. And you know, basically what I'd be looking for is you know, same kind of situation. I'm thinking that we gap up, uh, potentially. You know, who knows what happens with headlines overnight and, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I'm thinking we potentially could gap up. We get to the 4180s, up to 42, 4210, something like that. See if it starts to base at 42 and go, or if we start to fade off. Now, this, to give you an example, overstock was the exact trade. So uh, once again, and, and this goes to show you that it's not always exact. So you had uh, 64 here, and you had basically this prior high of, you know, 66.50s or so, right around there. Um, but my goal in the trade that I took, that I posted, that you saw, was you know some type of 64 uh, push out of the open, and then failed fall through momentum. 
And so this is exactly what I'd be looking for a situation like this on Twitter, right? So the trade that I took, I don't need to find the top. I look left, you know, I can see that this area is likely where they're gonna have an issue with it. And if that is the case, then I want, I don't necessarily need to get the top. I can always start in on the front side, but again, that's probably 10, 20% of my position, if that. But let them blow everybody out and then start to pick up the pieces. So that's exactly what I did on that particular trade. And again, you know, Twitter, same situation. I would love to uh, see them rip it back up to these levels. But again, the, the, the key levels, 4180s to 4210s, something like that. Same concept as Overstock, same trade that I took, same uh, trade that I posted on Twitter or Instagram. If you guys are following there, you can go back and review it. Uh, Neo. Neo is a great example of a stock channeling. Uh, and you know you can see that we pretty much have a base here, right? So uh, what I always tell people is, you know, be cautious of this. And you know, this is pretty choppy. You can see that it pretty much was 3070s for most of the day. It had a little bit of outlier action. Um, but your edge is off of open and then a 9.45 a.m. trend joint. Anytime that it's just kind of like a magnet at VWAP, I pretty much take it off. And you know, I always get a couple PMs and like, hey, what do you think about it? And I'm like, well, you know, look at it. It's just going like this over VWAP. What's your, what's your edge, right? You're either gonna make 50 cents or lose 50 cents. So I always wanna have the edge on my side. I, I don't wanna pick, I don't wanna guess which way it's gonna go. Um, so you can see that all the, the blow off were at the 30, 30, 90, 30, 70 levels. And then the bottom was 30, 30. So if I'm setting price alerts tomorrow, I'm putting alerts over this level, 30, uh, basically 31, 30, 80s, 30, 30s, 30, 20, 30s, and so on and so forth. Um, I don't want to be getting aggressive. I don't want size in this area because if I am wrong, I'm going to get ran over. I also don't want to size into weakness because we know that there is a good chance that it's gonna hold 3030s. In order for me to scale, I need to see it break under 3030s, come back, fail, come back, fail, and start to kind of fade off. That's what confirmation is for me. So in a situation like this, everybody always is, you know, has FOMO. Oh, I don't wanna miss the breakdown. And then they slam the bid and all of a sudden, boop, right back up. And you know, you're just getting chopped. This right here is an example of chop. So I wanna stay out of it, um, but, Again, this trade is going to come in. There's gonna be a great opportunity. I'll give you an example on JMIA. JMIA, I knew, I knew it was gonna come in. I knew that you know each time it kept on you know rallying back, almost too strong. I knew that people were trying to take the short trade, but then keep on. They, they kept on getting exhausted, right? I've been on that trade, right? So then it finally came in. So the key is just. Don't get exhausted. If it doesn't want to break that day, that's fine. Don't force it. But when it finally does, don't underestimate it. That's the key. Don't underestimate it. Just like you saw on DraftKings and all these other ones, don't underestimate what they can do. SRRK, we talked a little bit about this at the, at the uh, start of this video. You know, the price that they raise at does not matter. 39 bucks, you know, it's, it's under it. So people put a lot of faith in the pricing. Right and oh, that's great pricing. It, you know, it can't, it, it, it won't go under that. Look at DraftKings. Look at Pen. Pen raised at 61. It's into the low 50s. Um, and this could easily, in my opinion, go down to 34, 33, but then come back. Maybe 35, 36, something like that. Uh, if it doesn't want to break down, then that's fine. Thing is, it's just like I was talking about. You've got the news and you've got the offering. So you've had all that volume surrounding that event. So now, unfortunately, I'm not comfortable taking as much size as I did the past couple days. You know, I need to, you know, be hands off a little bit, start thinking in terms of, you know, maybe that three to five dollar pullback, but with less size versus size looking for the one to two dollar pullback. So that's gonna be the game plan. Those are the, the main watches. And as I say, every single day uh, that I do these, uh, there's also a link to the full scan. So you can come and you can see, uh, you know, basically everything that I'm talking about, I write it out as well. So uh, if you wanna see the charts uh, on big charts and, and, and see what they look like and see other comments, by all means, go to the website and check it out. Snap uh, was great. You guys saw the trade call in the room. Uh, I posted it on Twitter for you guys. Uh, again, nice react trade off the open. 
uh, you know, we, we pretty much came back in and retested this, this lower end level. And again, you know, sometimes I talk about, you know, just go back to look at VWAP levels, uh, pretty much right off that level as well from the day before. Uh, but I, uh, look, I, this week is going to be nuts, right? We could be up or down a thousand points depending on what happens with the election and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we could be, uh, we could be styling for a nice unwind and all of a sudden we gap up a thousand points and, you know, uh, it totally voids out the, any idea. So, I, you know, I, I'm looking for failed follow through momentum, but by Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all of that could change. So it's a day by day this week. Uh, and for me, it's about staying familiar. Same thing, JMIA. You know, we're going to have some nice rebounds, but I do think that this might want to flush out to the mid 1350s before it rebounds. Same thing, BLRX, big miss by me. Um, and I traded it actually the long side. Uh, and then I, I even said failed follow through momentum and I was gonna start watching it for the potential fade. Totally missed it. Uh, very clean trade. Even if you didn't get up here, uh, you know, just kind of looking at prior support levels becoming top. Uh, and then even if you didn't get it there, you know, pops right over here versus VWAP fantastic risk reward. So uh, again, non hindsight, I didn't take the trade, but you know, what could you learn from this? What are key levels that you could have made a, a proper trade? Those are three spots that you could have made the proper trade. And if they didn't work, that's fine. It was worth the 10, 15 cent risk for the potential of the 30, 50 or dollar on wine, which ended up happening. So that's that. Uh, Chewy, I've been watching this one. Not a fan of how it trades, but I am a fan of the potential of it going to mid 50s. So again, you know, something like this, I always just kind of look at what this prior support was and I'm looking for a gap up. Anything that pushes through 62s, 62.50s, I don't want to step in front of it with size. I think it would blow off, come back under that level and then start to, to fade off. That would be the goal. Overstock. Uh, this one, I actually bought some into the close on Friday, small. Um, it's not anything that I am uh, fairly aggressive uh, or, or have a bias about, uh, but I was thinking that they do the same thing. They gap it up to sell it down again. So I was thinking that maybe it gaps up a buck or two, maybe three, but it all depends on the market. So again, like I said, I think that the market might be gapping up tomorrow just based on how it, how it closed. But if not, then it's going to gap down a buck or two, you know, if the market's down a couple hundred points. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I did want to make make mention of, you know, something to watch out for too, you know, and, and also looking left, great, great. I mean, this is just picture perfect. But when they gapped it up on the, on the earnings, you know, they gapped it right into this daily level. And that's another way that you can use the daily chart support. Uh, right into that level is it was actually up there. Um, if you look at the intraday chart, you'll see that it was um, oops, into those uh, 85 levels almost, 80, 83 or so. Uh, but at any rate, um, this type of move, I've seen a lot this week. So I think it was this one and KRN, if I remember. Um, nope, I guess not. I'll think of it. But um, where they gap up, you think everything's good? Okay, earnings are good. And then I'm just like, total steady fade down. So be aware of that. Just because something goes up on earnings or on the headline, it might just be, you know, smoke and mirrors and all of a sudden it's going to take that turn and it's it's got no bid. So sometimes it's cheaper to walk it up, make everybody excited to get that liquidity on the downside. Otherwise, it might have just gapped down to 60 bucks, they would have all been stuck. So that's why a lot of times you see these momentum trades continue higher it's cheaper for them to just keep on supporting it, push it up higher so they can sell it back down, you know, later on. These things are all controlled. DraftKings. Uh, you know, I, obviously everybody's smoked. Uh, and now all these people that were happy and they had just doubled, you know, in this area, we're, we're coming into this support here. 35 levels pretty big. So in my opinion, even though it's already come down a lot, I feel like we could come down even more. It's going to test those people that are oversized, over leveraged, on margin. Uh, and, you know, anybody that was that didn't sell over here is going to have to face that. Oh, boy, 
What do I do? Do I sell? So with that said, this is when the emotions come out. This is when the, oh man, it was 60, now it's 50, now it's 40, now it's, now it's almost under 30. What if it goes to 20? And then they're bailing at 28, and then we finally had that nice big rebound of, you know, five, six, seven bucks. So don't underestimate it, but I am watching it for, uh, for the reversal. And the same thing, same situation with, you know, Penn. You know, don't underestimate. This thing was four bucks. And, you know, the, the, the biggest thing they have going for them right now is, is Dave Portnoy. Uh, you know, and, and like nothing else is working. All the other casinos, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's a story stock. So, you know, they raised a bunch of money. They're, they'll be good for a little while. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know, be cautious. So, anyway, again, like I said, description has a link to the scan. Uh, and then I have the staying familiar section. So, staying familiar is stocks. I've got about 12 names uh, or so. But, you know, just stocks that I want to see. You know, for example, BYND, Etsy, Roku, um, DOCU, GoGo, GME, BBBY. All these stocks have, you know, done exactly that. That was one other point that I wanted to make. You know, um, what we're seeing in this market is these, you know, outlier moves as we call them, uh, and the pricing inefficiencies, all that kind of stuff. But we're seeing these these just exhaustion moves. And this was all a squeeze from that day. You know, don't underestimate how far GME can go back down. It can go right back down to 950s and then even more. All it was was a reaction to this day. Shorts got caught, squeezed everybody out, and now it's coming back to reality. Same thing BBBY, um, same thing with GoGo, -Go, same situation, and you know, held trend, had that blow off move. Again, the head fake. I was talking about the head fake earlier on uh, Overstock, as well as another one that I still, <laughs> still don't remember. But, you know, they'll make you think it's going one way, it looks like a perfect breakout, all of a sudden, bids are gone. And if you think about you know, what you're up against right now, there's a lot of shorts on the wrong side, right? So as that short cover comes in, you know, that it, it appears as though it's really bullish. There's a lot of buyers and everybody wants in. But is that the reality? And the reality is, is that a lot of shorts are covering, 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 covering. Blow them out. Okay. Who's on the bids? Nobody. It was all shorts all along. So think about that before you start buying dips. Um, and uh, so I think that's about it. If you guys have any questions at all, reach out. I will be doing another video. Uh, like I said, give a like. If I get another thousand likes, I'll do another video. Um, that's how we're gonna do this. Uh, you know, the more interactive, the more um, actions on your end, uh, the better. And um, you know, I'll, I'll try to keep on getting these things out. It is difficult uh, because I don't like to just throw out a video of me blabbing with, you know, without really thinking it through. So that's why I put out that last video, but I still wanna do a always looking left video with some recent examples and real trades that I took the week after we discussed it. So um, you're gonna have to buckle up this week. Like I said, it's gonna be aggressive. Uh, there's gonna be volatility. There's going to be um, some, some big action. So um, cruise lines, huge headline last week, T530 in the room, just first to the street. So. As far as news, headlines, all that kind of stuff, if you guys are in the room, you know how fast it is. Um, so reach out if you have any questions uh, about the room. Again, give us a like, leave a comment, your biggest takeaway. That is how uh, you know I give out the t-shirts. I give out uh, a month of IU once a month, as well as Momo Trader book. So leave your biggest takeaway. That helps me decide what I'm gonna talk about the following week. And that's it. We'll see you in the room tomorrow.